Well, speaking of fall, we are only 25 more days away from the return of real professional football. We're only uh, 13 days away from the opening games of college football. You could go home today after this service and preseason football can stream on your TV today. And that is a glorious reality that we have had to wait far too long. And that makes some of us in this room extremely happy. That makes some of us uh, maybe a little dreadful. And some of us just seriously could not care less. And uh, that's all good. It takes all kinds. And I'm, I'm grateful that we're all in this space today. We'll only talk about football for a minute. I think it's going to be a good, helpful illustration. And then we'll move on and not come back to it, I promise. Well, if you've spent any time with me, you know that I love all things sports, uh, football, baseball, basketball, anything. I, I love doing it. I love watching it. I'm all about sports. Um, but football might be my favorite. And there's a lot that goes into the game of football, a lot of strategies, a lot of skills necessary. Uh, but one of the things that I think is like really underrated that's so necessary to be effective in football is called momentum. Momentum is a common thing that is one of those things in, in a sport that you can't really plan for. It's just something you have to find pretty quickly in a game. And in football especially, you hear this phrase a lot called a momentum shift. And it's this moment where an opposing team does something to all of a sudden just change the entire course and direction of how the game was going. Maybe they started off, they were getting beat down, they weren't doing really well, and then all of a sudden the team comes up out of nowhere and they make a really big play. They get a good turnover, they score a touchdown, whatever it may be, and the momentum is shifted. It was going one way, there was favor, there was hope, all this expectation that one team was just going to run away with it, but one big play can just shift and change things. But the momentum shift can impact you when you're on the other side of things, too. You could be the team that thought you were just going to cruise through this thing. You, it started off well, you were having a good time, and then all of a sudden, a couple things get in your way. And all of a sudden, you're starting to think, ah, oh, we might not have it in us today. This other team seems to just be really rolling. They're going to come through and, and take this away from us. And a game like football relies on these momentum shifts to inspire a team. You see this all the time. Um, I was just talking with somebody in our church a couple weeks ago. The Oregon Ducks got to play in a really big uh, bowl game a few, few years back. It's many years back by now. And uh, it was one of the kind of the top bowl games of the year. And our kick returner on the opening play ran it back. And it just was like a dagger to the chest of the other team. It was like, why do you even show up? We're here to play. We're scoring on the first play of the game. It's not, there's no hope for you today. You shouldn't be here. And when you see some teams on the opposite side of a momentum shift, you can like literally see it in their faces on the sideline. You see how sad they are. You see how defeated they feel. There's just like this mental game with momentum that can just shift and impact things. It impacts our ability to, or a team's ability to have hope and their ability to proceed through the game and get to the winning outcome that they hope to have. Hope is a powerful motivator. And when you lose hope, there's something that just eats at your soul, that just defeats you, that just takes you, checks you out of it. And before we know it, we're tuning into the other game because this game's not fun to watch anymore. They don't have any more fight in them. We gotta find something else to watch. This isn't even fun. And this isn't just in sports. How many of us know what it's like to be having like a really good day? Everything's going really smooth. You woke up and like coffee was great. You're like having a great relational morning with your spouse or with your kids or with your friends and, and all these kinds of things. Like everything just feels great. You're on top of the world. You're excited for the day. And then all of a sudden, something unexpected comes out of nowhere. Like you, you get bad news. It could be something as tragic as you know, you, you lose your job, you lose a loved one, a friend who you have been close with for many, many years does something that really hurts you. It could be one of those really big things out of nowhere. You're just having a normal good day, and then all of a sudden, it's like momentum shift. It's like, what just happened? It could be something really inconvenient, something really small. 
um, just this week. Jess and I were driving around town, and I was really craving chicken fried rice. I love chicken fried rice. And I, I just like had this hankering for it and was like, all right, well, let's, let's drive around town. I know that Safeway Deli is going to have it. I, if, if they're closing down, we can go to Panda Express. They'll have it. And no joke, 7 p.m. on a Monday night, we drove to three or four stores that all should have had chicken fried rice. Nowhere. And it was like delis were shut down. Stores were telling us it was going to be a 25-minute wait. And I was so shocked and embarrassed at like, how much it ruined my night. <laughs> like, I was so looking forward to it. And when, like, that disruption of, like, not getting the food that I, like, was really just having a craving for, like, I was so upset. And I, like, probably still need to be apologizing to my wife for my temperament because, like, I just was, like, so cranky because, like, I really wanted this. I knew it was something to like really easy to go acquire. And then it was like, okay, this is so inconvenient. Um, there's so many little things like that that can just pop up in our days that all of a sudden it's like all sort of like just joy and hope and momentum that we may have had in a circumstance. It's just like completely derailed. And now like our world is falling apart. As people who don't have complete controls of our days and of our lives, uh, it can be really disorienting when something kind of goes out of the way that we anticipated it was supposed to go. A project or task that you've done at work a thousand times that you know it's just supposed to work this way. It's just supposed to go like this. And for some reason today, it's choosing to give you a, a difficult time. A great relationship that you've had that's always been trustworthy and consistent did something that really hurt you and damaged your ability to trust them. There are dozens of factors in our day-to-day -day lives that are out of our control, and when they go wrong, they can impact our posture of hope and joy, both in this short-term sense, like me being upset about not getting to get the fried rice I wanted, but it can also impact our hope and joy in the long-term sense as well. Sometimes we find ourselves in just like these streaks of things that just one thing after another, just the world feels out to get me today. Nothing can go right. Everything feels wrong. And as we go through setback after setback, we just feel it again, like, like the sports teams. It's just eating away at our soul. It's just taking away our ability to have any sort of hope or perspective that at the end of the day, we're going to be okay with all of this. You see a lot of people right now, and maybe even some people in this room or watching the stream that can identify with the deconstruction movement happening within Christianity. Um, people choosing to step back from maybe some of their systematic beliefs that they've had about faith and decide, I'm going to kind of, uh, we're going to see what we could pick apart here. I don't like this. This kind of did that. And so much of the time, what happens uh, what has happened for an individual identified through these experiences is they've gone through a circumstance that's led to their hope or their posture of receiving what they once believed and felt to be so true has now led them over. It could be one time thing or it could be this gradual instance that leads to them all of a sudden feeling like I just can't have hope in this anymore. This doesn't bring me joy anymore, peace anymore. And so we go through these instances in our lives that just chip away day after day at our hope. Hope is inspiring and can compel us in ways that we never thought was possible, but the lack of hope can result in dire consequences. A lack of hope can lead us to turn towards sources that make empty promises to us, tricking you to believe that a temporary joy or pleasure is going to be enough to uh, kind of heal you or to carry you through whatever circumstance that you've been going through. Pastor Chris talked about some of these things last week. Um, it's that verse from Romans 1 where we take good things that God has given us and we distort their priority and place in our life and we end up worshiping them as the primary thing instead of God. And what happens is those things that were good gifts end up becoming terrible gods in our life. Some of these good things might be families. They might be uh, sports, hobbies, our career, our finances, achievements, good things that God has gifted us with. But with too much power as the center of our lives, they can really create some damage and misbalance of what we're supposed to experience in our life. 
We can also turn to more overtly dangerous and sinful things when we are lacking hope. Bad relationships, pornography, substances. In fact, a study from Massachusetts General Hospital discovered that during the pandemic, there was a 21% increase in excessive drinking in U.S. adults. It means one out of every five adults have participated in binge drinking um, or, or other forms of excessive drinking to try to cope, to try to get by, to try to get through the stresses that we all felt during that season. And sometimes we read a statistic like 21%, and it feels like this kind of arbitrary, like far-off reality. But that means potentially people in this room, people listening to the stream. That means certainly friends and family members of ours at home in our lives, people that we do life with each and every day have turned to, to things that are going to eventually, when becoming the main source of joy and priority in your life, are going to lead to destruction, are going to, to, to lead to pain. And whether you've turned to a good thing that's been distorted from its original purpose, or we've turned to a more dangerous thing, it's hard to break cycles of putting our hope and trust in them. We know that they're bad gods, we know that it's more of just a band-aid that's offering like this just temporary, like this temporary healing instead of this fulfilling and, and actually healing process that we need to go through. We know that they're bad gods, but yet we still turn to them. We need a better hope. And the people in our lives need a better hope. We need a hope that transcends the ups and downs of life that can carry us through what we know is true and good about our God. In the true biblical sense of the word, hope is a confident expectation of good things that are to come. Not this like finger crossing, like wishful thinking, well, I just hope things are going to be okay. The Bible tells us that we can have a hope that's a confident expectation in God and in his promises to us. And through faith, Hope in God anchors our soul when we find ourselves in seas of uncertainty. Our big idea for this morning is that the unshakable life is anchored in hope through faith in God. Hey, thanks for checking out our YouTube video today. We appreciate you taking the time to tune in with us. Before you take off, please hit the like button. And if you want more of this content and you want to be notified when we put out new videos, hit the subscribe button and the little bell for notifications right next to it. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.